I'm a learning technology design specialist in learning, teaching, and writing. Um, Michelle, did you want to give kind of a, a quick introduction? This is uh, Michelle. She's the associate provost, um, associate dir or director of learning, teaching, and writing for you. Yeah. Um, I think if you haven't um, looked at our, our brochure out there, it lays it out pretty clearly. Um, and I think what this talk is going to do is it's going to focus on one technology, but it's going to show you through talking about that one technology, the four areas that we work in and how it might, how it might work for that, for classroom, for writing center, for faculty development, um, and for writing across campus activities. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll chime in if I need to, Mario, go ahead. Sounds good. Um, I'd like for this to be as interactive as possible, so if you have questions, just please feel free to just shout them out. Um, we do have some nice t-shirts up here, uh, writing center, so um, I'm going to use those as uh, bait, so to speak. So if you, if you ask a question, you get a shirt. So, yes. Can I have a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can have a shirt. <laughs> Uh, so no, feel, feel free anytime. Let's just kind of have a nice conversation uh, about this. So, as Michelle mentioned, um, learning and teaching and writing, um, our, really our, our goal is to provide support for uh, students facu and faculty as they learn and teach across, uh, across campus. Um, just a few ways that, that we do this, and we have we do many more things, but um, with faculty and student writing groups, we host those all the time on multiple locations on campus and especially in the writing center. Uh, tenure workshops and new faculty seminars are, are something that we um, provide for faculty members. <clears throat> graduate te teaching academy is another thing that we do. Um, it really helps uh, graduate TAs to you know, learn more about teaching and kind of give them some help and give them an opportunity to interact with each other. Um, and also, you know, a cool thing that I didn't realize that, that we did uh, is we're actually out in the Norman community as well. So we're in uh, public schools doing workshops, also doing things at the library. So just really helping writing and learning in, in the community in general. And as, as I mentioned, there, there are a lot more things on this list. And we do that underneath the um, four units that we have here, which is expository writing, writing across campus, learning and teaching, and the writing center. A key element of my role, and really the, the focus of my role, is to uh, support and recommend technologies um, that will support this learning and writing across campus. So one of the technologies that I've become familiar with, uh, that IT is, has implemented and graciously given us access to, uh, is WebEx. WebEx is, is not anything new, it's not anything cute, it doesn't have a, a you know, cat uh, and its logo or anything like that. I mean, it's just a really solid uh, software as a service uh, platform, and that's really easy to use. Like I said, it's solid. The times that we have not experienced any kind of te technical difficulties whatsoever. Um, so it's just a really, really solid platform. I think it's, it's like I said, it's not new. It's been around for several years. Um, and really, the only thing that you need is a computer, a wireless device with an internet connection. Um, an audio connection, and their webcam is optional. You can just do an audio chat. Um, in our uses, you know, the face-to-face -face communication is key to what we do in the writing center. So um, we, of course, use a webcam uh, whenever, whenever we do that. And what I want to do real quick is just drop out of here and uh, show WebEx really, really quickly. Um, as you can see, I've logged in already. You have a lot of different options around here. What we're looking at here is just to schedule a meeting. Um, the person that you're scheduling the meeting with, they don't have to have a WebEx account or anything. Basically, um, you give it, you know, you give it some information, a topic, a password, everything like that. You give it a date, um, and down here it's kind of hard to see if the resolution is a little, little weird. But, uh, Can I ask a question? Sure. You said you had logged in already. You just log in with your profile. Well, um, what do you have to there are there are accounts there there are um, IT is doing a pilot program right now. Um, if you're part of some of the bigger SLA clients, um, our well, she's X class. So oh, okay, basically so, anyone in this room can come to us and we can right. put you under our account. 
so the writing center has has an account that you're you're more than welcome to use. Um, but but um, no, it's not it's not authenticated with four plus four. We have specific user accounts. Um, you can see here that you add attendees. You can add multiple. You can hit your address book. Um, and then basically what that does is that shoots out an email that says, uh, Mario would like you to attend this meeting. And then it gives you all the information as far as where to log in, what to put in, password, everything like that. Are there limits? Only up to 20 people, only up to 30 people, or only five? I, like I don't know. Um, that's a really good question. But uh, as far as I know, I, in the documentation that I've read, there, there are no limits. Um, I know there's an actual group component to WebEx as well. Um, so, so that might be where you, you, you involve you know, a lot of people. Right now, the, the way that IT is um, licensing it for us is is that we have one anchor, yeah. and then we can send out as many invitations as we want. Right. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, we got t here. Sleeping on the job. <laughs> okay. There's enough for everybody. There is. Yeah, we have more too out there. So if you don't get one here, just come see us. Um, so yes, um, we can provide you um, access to the to our writing center account. Also, um, IT has just a general account for cross campus. That one is actually first come first serve. So if you schedule a meeting from three to four on next Thursday. Um, then nobody else can schedule it at that time. So there is a general uh, account as well. Now the thing, the thing about it too is, since we're piloting this right now, the best thing about it is, and the best thing that we can do is to give IT feedback on how it's working. Um, it, you know, it's not working right. It was hard to use. It was great to use. Um, because based on that feedback, there could, you know, there are campuses uh, across the nation that are actually WebEx campuses, and they just that's provided as a service for everyone. Um, so, um, you know, if it's something you're interested in, um, be sure that we have that dialogue and get that feedback, um, so we'll know what kind of recommendations to make. On it. So, um, so it's it's a pretty pretty simple interface to use here. And I'll jump back over to while well, you're doing that. Um, apparently, we have until August to to use this as much as we would like, and so the board folks who try it and give feedback, I think the, the more likely it is that IT would decide to adopt it. Absolutely. And everybody knows the big thing with that is money. So um, if you don't want your department to have to pay for it, then you know, we can get IT to fit the bill. For, 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 um, I don't know. So um, I mentioned um, the face-to-face -face communication and the synchronous consultation that happens in the writing center. And you can tell just by this, this picture there, paper shuffling, there, you know, there's consultants, there's really some great collaboration happening here. Um, and so all of our locations, um, we have a location in Wagner, the main location, and we have satellites in Kate and also um, Sarkis. Um, and it's all about that synchronous consultation. You'll come in, um, you can schedule an appointment, um, you can sit down one-on-one -on -one with a consultant, or in this case, a group, and you can really get some of that, um, that great feedback and help. But the face-to-face, is the, the key kind of to this, to what we're talking about here. And the problem with that is, as we all know, that not all OU students are on the Norman campus. So, um, you know, we have graduate students, we have study abroad students, we have distance learners. Um, so that, that could, could be a little bit of an issue. Now, what the Writing Center and WebEx, uh, using WebEx allowed us to do is have that synchronous consultation, but we just put it online. So we use that tool, uh, WebEx, right in between there, and um, we remove that physical location restraint, and it allows us to work with students everywhere, really, at any time. Um, and it still gives us that really great face-to-face -face interaction, and um, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to use. Um, one case that, that was uh, a real win last semester was um, with Evan. Evan is our graduate. Uh, writing assistant and um, soon to be father and he's going to have twins so he probably won't have a lot of time to, to be doing all this uh, here coming up in a couple of months but all around great guy an excellent writer excellent consultant um, he got a request from Sarah Sarah is a doctoral candidate in the OU School of Music um, Sarah is in New Jersey and she has a 
at this time, she had a um, one-month-old baby. They, you can actually hear in, in the background during the consultation, so it's kind of funny. So you can imagine, not only was she 1,400 miles away, um, but she had other responsibilities. She was kind of tied to the house. So, um, so what we were able to do is use WebEx to kind of connect these two. And it worked out really, really well. You know, Sarah needed some help with, she said initially, uh, you know, she's working on her dissertation. She needed some help with paragraph and sentence structure and also tense. Um, so she, she really kind of had an idea of, of what she needed help on, but it actually turned into this whole other collaboration, which, which was uh, really great. Like I mentioned, she lives on the East Coast, so it um, you know, would be impossible for her to come to campus just to get help with her writing. So what I want to do now is just kind of drop out of here and um, show you guys a little bit of this interaction so you can, you can have a little sample. I should say, too, Mario, that um, Sarah gave us permission to uh, show an excerpt today. Right. The biggest point I was considering. So the first was about um, where did his musical philosophy come from um, for so, education. So you can the see second, uh, they've already prepared their sharing document. He needed to address whether or not his position is contested by anyone else or if other people hold a different view. So you mm -hmm. spend a lot of time. Um, this is the, the real-time capture, right? looking at the right now. And he sees that musical heritage as, um, as a very worthwhile and good thing. Mm -hmm. I wonder, anytime, anytime anyone talks about a heritage, it's, um, it's a necessarily exclusive thing. There's a certain right. thing that you find important, other things you don't find important. And that process is, is fairly subjective. And I wonder, I wonder if you need to set up, if anyone um, disagrees with them, frankly, on, mm -hmm. on the value of one specific cultural tradition in music. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. I, so this is really good right here. There's, you know, there's a lot of... I mean, it's one of these things in music that's relatively common. Um, especially when you're dealing with somebody who's in the, you know, concert and academic arena. That generally the music that is taught is the one of the, you know, Western Fine Art Canon. Right. Um, so you can see, I mean... It's almost like there's no computer in between. The only, I, I don't know if I need to, other than, I don't know, I just want you to think about it a little bit because, I mean, he very much is a traditionalist. Yeah. And he very much even self-professes that he's not interested in other styles of music. Okay. Um, now, is that because he finds them on a personal level uninteresting, or is it that he really heralds with one tradition. The great I, I think it's those. Okay. Yeah. So if, if it is both, I, I don't know if you need to talk to, at all about, about the, you know, contesting the canon. Right. You know, and you know, honestly, I think in chapter four, when I do the definition of music, okay. I think I maybe address that in a different way than what I did here. Oh. So <clears throat> you can see that, I mean, there's a lot of really great interaction happening still. She's getting help with her writing. And when I saw this, it was almost like there wasn't anything in between them. I mean, this is indicative of what happens every day in the writing center just between the, you know, students and, and, and consultants. Um, Evan had prepared before. Um, he read the paper, he had some notes uh, set up already, so he had some talking points. So when he scheduled that appointment, you know, it was, it was kind of uh, down to business, so to speak, whenever they, they got in their way. So, yeah. Mario, let me ask you two quick questions. Sure. So that document with the, with the comments in the margin, both Sarah and Evan are seeing that, that That's correct. document? Yeah. In okay. this case, Evan is sharing his screen mm -hmm. with Sarah, 
Um, the cool thing about WebEx is that um, at any time you can toggle that on and off. So if you and I are doing it, I can say, yeah, you know, look at this, this, and this, and then you can say, that's great. Um, you know, here, look at my screen now, and you can kind of switch back and forth. So it's really cool. There are a lot of tools inside of WebEx that um, they didn't even really use. I mean, they basically just use the screen share. But there's annotation in there. There's highlighting. Uh, there, there are all kinds of, of really neat tools there that you can use. So you could put a document up and go do something to it? Or oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You can, you can draw on it. You can, um, you can highlight certain areas. And you can save it. Okay. And you can record the whole session. Yeah. Right. So if, especially if you have a doc student far away, you can capture the conversation, yeah. Yeah. you know, okay. and it gets saved as a um, what it, it, it gets saved over in your WebEx dashboard. Under here, you can see my recorded meetings. And then so you can go back and, and have them for review at any time. So, pretty cool. Um, the, the screen of it switched between Evan speaking and Sarah speaking. Um, it's microphone. You're doing that? No, 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 it's microphone activated. Okay, so whoever's speaking then shows the Yeah, okay. whoever's microphone wins at that point, it, it, it switches over. That's only for the, uh, the webcam piece. Uh -huh. But the, the actual screen piece can be can be uh, swapped back and forth, or you can decide one person's going to run that. Yeah, you can lock that too. So you could, if you wanted to just give a presentation, for example, you could just lock it in. But you cannot actually work simultaneously on the document. You do have to pass it back. Yeah. Over right. For the screen share. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't type over somewhere at the same time. Right. Um, and, okay. So you. You have access to the WebEx, and so you invite the person, because Sarah doesn't have that control because it's on campus right now. Mm -hmm. So do they receive an email, and yes. then you guys connect at that certain time, and you go press go, basically? Yep. pretty much. Time. It'll kick out an email uh, to Sarah, and it gives her all the information. Here's the link that you follow. She simply clicks the link, opens it up in her browser, uh, puts the password if there is one, um, and then they're ready to go. Um, so you can see that, you know, that, that really helped uh, a lot for her. Um, and we, I don't think we've heard from her since the end of the semester, but, you know, like, hopefully she's, 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 she's making some progress. On she's going to be defending her. She's, yeah, Yay. so, um, you know, it, 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 really, it really helped them. With the, you know, without WebEx, I mean, they might have been able to do an online consultation, maybe, you know, an online submission, I'll maybe email you my paper, and then, but, which is great you know, that we offer, of course, in the writing center. But you know, the face-to-face -face is really is really the valuable thing here. So um, I wanted to just kind of go through and, and look at faculty uses, and these are three things that I I just came up with. Um, you know, possibly scheduling uh, WebEx as part of your office hours, making making uh, yourself accessible there to students, um, so so they can uh, chat with you from the comfort of their own dorm room. Or if they're out of town too, I don't know. Um, you can also facilitate guest speakers for your classes. So if you have somebody off campus that you think is a, a really key person in your field, you know, bring them in in, in a little WebEx conference um, and, and have them talk to your class. Um, I think that would be really valuable. Um, Wake Forest is actually a WebEx, WebEx campus, and um, one of the law classes brought in some really high-ranking uh, judge gave a presentation to like hundreds of students, so it was, it was pretty neat. Um, this is a big one, delivering content during campus closures. Um, <laughs> you know, if you don't, it, it, it's kind of limited right now because we're just on a trial account, but, um, you know, in the future, if we were a WebEx campus, I mean, that, that possibly could, could be something where if there was, you know, a few days down, given the nature of um, our nature here in Oklahoma, uh, you know, you have to deliver some critical content, and that might be a way to do it. Or simply just communicate with your student. The student might be having some trouble, uh, and you can do that. But then, um, I'm not a faculty member, so I wanted to ask faculty members, like, maybe what else it could be used for? If there was uh, any, any ideas or thoughts that anyone had? It allows me to keep my students separate from my personal Skype account that's not reliable anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. It's provided by Canvas. It's, it's here. Um, <laughs> I did on Skype. Right. I have to go through, and I because I've used Skype before for with my students, and then I have sure. to try and block each one of them or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it keeps that. Yeah, that's, 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 that's great. 
Anything else? Well, I work with, I have um, research collaborations. I collaborate with people on other campuses. So Absolutely. to be able to not just patch together Skype and Google Docs, but have a mm -hmm. better solution for that. Mm -hmm. that so all, all, in, all in one place and then absolutely? Yes. Well, I know that you know we've got three different campuses for, for the University of Oklahoma. And if we've got a training class, because I'm a trainer, so I'm going to speak to that. But if I've got someone in Tulsa, right now the con, you know the current current thing is somebody in Tulsa wants to take a class, they have to drive to Norman. Mm -hmm. And you know that's expensive, that's time consuming because they've lost two and a half hours, you know, between, you know, just driving, not counting parking, not counting everything else. So being able to say, hey, dial into this class, sure. I'll teach it to you personally, you know, that gives a lot more value just for, you know, even for employees to be able to deliver something to their desktop that they've got, you yeah. know, that they can, you know, take home, record, or whatever else. That's a great point, too, because it also saves the university money on travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I run actually a large class in which they get put into groups. And there are times when I'm working in my office and a group, one of the people will send me an email saying, hey, we're working in the library or someplace, we're struggling with this, we have some questions or a formula, and boy, it would be nice to have something where I could go, let me see your screen, let me see what you're working on. Yeah. And that, to that, I, I wonder, you showed the interface where it's schedule a meeting and all, can, how easy is it to, on the fly, if somebody sends me an email, then I go, hey, let me create a session and let's jump into it. Is that possible? Absolutely. There's something called a uh, one-click meeting. I wondered. I saw that. I invite me right to see how, see how easy it is. <coughs> What do you need from the other people to be able to invite them? Just their 4x4? Four four? No. Just an email. Just an email address. Okay. The email has the everything else in it. Okay. In it. They don't have to download anything. Okay. And they don't need to have a video. Not necessarily. They just need to be able to, if they've got a computer, because I don't need yeah. to see their faces, right. they don't need yeah. to see mine necessarily. But the audio features, yeah. The audio. Yeah. All right, so you, you want to have a quick, spontaneous thing with me, right? So you just go, you know. We'll start a calendar, you don't have to. I haven't actually gone through this on this computer yet, so let's see what happens. I think after this screen, I just. Can you join from my phone or iPad? Yes, it is any, any mobile device. So I'm actually seeing it on my computer. I'm actually seeing it. Let's talk. Yeah. 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 So, um, so you don't even have to send out an email. Well, you know, I think this this actually happens over our local network here. Call, can you call using the computer, or do you want to invite the other one? Oh. But it looks like if I was, if I just, as a student, would know the e or the URL. It's like I came in and I just clicked on Browse Meetings, and it came up and it suddenly shows 309. Let's talk. Yeah. And there's even a join button. So it looks like it's pretty easy to set up a spur of the moment. Yeah, like you said, the the technology is is really really nice. Um, it's really solid. So. So that, that's how you'd be able to, to just kind of go through and, and quickly make a meeting. Also, if you wanted to use the standard schedule, you could schedule it for two minutes in advance as well. And just say, check your email, and you're going to get an invite, and just, and just do it that way. Cool. I don't know if you got a, a notification in your email. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, we could probably talk for another couple hours about faculty uses or just any uses on campus. So um, I, would, I would really encourage uh, you guys to, to get started. Um, 
use this to be a benefit for the entire campus. Um, like I mentioned, some of your um, larger IT SLA clients, architecture, engineering, I think engineering is really, really using it quite a bit now. Um, we have an account. So there are, you're already set up. As I mentioned before, there's already a, a public account available too for anybody in the OU community to use. Um, you'll, you'll have to get with IT. I was wondering how you get to that public account. You could uh, feel free to contact me. Um, I've got business cards and uh, my contact info. Feel free to contact me. And I'll get you in the right place. You would, you need to get with Chris and then um, get you get you set up there. Um, also, the writing center account. You're more than welcome to use any. So, so that, that's that's all I have for you guys today. Um, my contact information is here. Um, like I meant, like I mentioned before, part of my role is to um, help facilitate and support that learning using technology um, across campus. So if there's anything that you need, please feel free to contact me and uh, be more than happy to collaborate with you. Yes? Um, you said that there's a this is only a sample until what, August? August. Um, what then occurs after that? Would you, would IT for you have to pay for that for your spe specific account? Would you all well, come? What happens after that is IT will, will ask for feedback, do some evaluation. Um, they'll see if, if it's if it's a great fit for all campus. A lot of campuses using it. They've got great got great feedback. Um, then it's possible that IT could could purchase it. If not, yes, you can purchase a separate account for your department only. Um, but that would be you entering a contract with WebEx separately, which I think that's what engineering does currently. Their own. Yeah, so a couple couple departments were ahead of everybody else about this. They they brought it in and they knew about it and they needed it. And then IT got rid of it. Mm -hmm. IT is wanting feedback. They're trying to figure out what the um, the cost model would be. You know, if if it's you know I I I uh, have, have meetings with people all over the country whose campuses have WIMBA, for example. And they don't have to pay at the pump. That the, the campus owns the product, and they can use it any time. That would be great if we could get enough folks, in, you know, behind WebEx to make it uh, worthwhile, to, you know, to purchase. Well, Otherwise, well, it'll probably go to pay at the pump, you know. So, right. I mentioned one of the other things. Um, you said that in other places on campuses, but I'm actually familiar with how engineering is using it. Um, and some of the complications that came up. Dr. Fruitman's degree of uh, aerospace and mechanical engineering is actually doing a, uh, I got a collaborative research. course. Cool. A collaborative course with the University of Washington. So the professors, there's two professors, one at Washington, one here at the University of Oklahoma, and they switch off their lectures. They have a collaborative unit between the students. Problem with this system, one, well, I should start with the good. The good thing is you've got two campuses, two universities that are actually working together. The professors are collaborating. The students in each class are actually working on projects across uh, state lines. However, the problem and one of the complications they come up with is you don't really hear the students. It depends on how the camera in the classroom. That's one of the things no one, it's that small <coughs> thing that no one thinks about because you think, oh, you're just your webcam. If you're not wanting to use your webcam and you're trying to capture a room, that would require a particular type of setup because what was lost, um, and I worked with uh, them during this pilot, was that one of the things that was lost was the student comments. There was a group in the back that you could hear them, kind of, but Oklahoma side would have to say, could you repeat that? Could you repeat that, please? And of course, repeating it is fine, but five times, 10 times, 11 times, you know, in an hour, it's kind of one of those going, all right, this isn't so seamless. So that, if you're looking at large collaborations, it is an amazing thing to be able to do across university, but the room would be key. Where you're using it and how that's set up would be one of the things I'm not bad. There would be some hardware considerations, of course, yeah, if you're using it right. in a room of you know, 100 students. I mean, um, it's, it's great for this one-on-one, -on -one. and even in the video, you can see, and you can go here and adjust your mic sensitivity levels and things like that. Evan is much more quiet than Sarah was. Sarah's, so her mic yeah, settings were probably right. a little bit higher. So right. you know, there's some tweaking that you'd have to do there. Um, and especially if you're going to do it in a, in a large group setting. Are, are these automatically recorded? They, yes. Are you going to be recorded? Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. You, you, you hit record. It's not the right. default. It's so. not the default, no. right? That's, that's exactly right. So and for confidentiality reasons or something, you didn't want sure. to. Sure. Right. Yeah. 
Yes. Is there a multi cam, like multi user? Can you just do one to one, or can you do like three? You can do you think, yeah, you can do as many. Um, I, I think there is a cap at some point, but so you have like ten faces up on your screen or something. I mean, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I think that gets into the group product a little bit more. But um, yeah. And actually, what you'll find is the people who talk most recently, their pictures will be up there. Right. But they wouldn't try to fit all the panels necessarily. Right. Um, so when the computer is running, can you be like running SAS programs and stuff on the computer? So sure. Um, there's really uh, it's it's not very intrusive or hardware intensive at all. So it's, it's really I mean, when you were sharing the screen, I was thinking about like the research collaboration. I would be saying, hey, why don't you try this programming step, and I could actually see, see what's that happening. person on their computer type in the programming step to execute and see what the results were. Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it shares the entire the entire screen of that person sharing the space. And, and you're saying that right now, for those of us who aren't in engineering, there's just one of these slots. There's one public account that anybody can use. Um, and that's just one slot. So if somebody's Right. Have to call that. Right. Yeah. Right. That means you schedule and you're you're competing, right? Now. But the writing center one is different. The writing center, um, it's well, it, it, it's the same way, but we, you know, we'll be more than happy to, to work with you and find a time that you can use it. Now, I don't want to limit. I don't want to limit that at all either. I know that there there are some other IT accounts, and if it's something that you really feel strongly about and really want to give that feedback and pilot and test, I'm sure we could work something. To where you have access when you need it. We have students working in groups and one of them has to call them for the weekend or something. Can we point them to a public account to use as a public for students as well? Let me check on that. I think right now it's for faculty and staff. Okay. Uh, I don't know about students. Right yeah, now. I'm not sure if they can initiate an account or not. Yeah. I, have to check. I, can, check, I can check on that for sure. Yeah. So they can join in on the meeting, they just can't create. Anybody can join in. Absolutely. Yeah, they just can't log in. I, what I, I've, I've kind of been pushing with some faculty is, you know, if you have a doctoral student, you know, who's not around and working on their exams or their dissertation, you can create, you can um, schedule like a monthly check-in, you know, and looking at text as well. Right. And I think you can tell a lot from seeing the person. <laughs> Oh, the condition of their learning. <laughs> <laughs>